again. Always a pleasure. Um, thank you, Papa and Mommy. Uh, greetings, church. I know that uh, we have been touched by that service. Uh, the message uh, was really a touching message indeed. So I know that um, a lot of us are going through so many things, but uh, I want us to focus on the positive side of that message. It's a very, very powerful message that, you know, left so many people heavy and I see a lot of people crying. And um, that also brings, you know, to my focus about the fact that where I come from, uh, it is hard for us to cry if we are not beaten. For me to cry, you need to beat the living daylight out of me. I grew up, you know, in an environment where it is co corporal punishment, you know, and that's why I've come to the conclusion that I think there are three ways of child upbringing in the world. I want to believe one is the Western way, the second I call the black people's way, and the last one, the Nigerian way. I will break it down. You see, the Western way is a way where you want to chastise a child, but you end up begging the child. Like you say, Jenny, you better come here right now. I'm going to count to three. Jenny, you better come here. Jenny, one. Jenny, two. Jenny, three. Jenny, four. Jenny, five. Okay, Jenny, please come back. You will even apologize. Okay, Jenny, I'm sorry. Please come back. Now the second way, the black people's way. Jenny, you better come back right now. I'm going to whoop you behind right now. I'm not going to count to three. Jenny, one. Jenny's back. And the last way, which is the Nigerian way, we don't beg you. We don't even tell you. Rather, we encourage you to go so that you can be beaten. So this is what you hear. Jenny, if them born you where, go. You will see Jenny running back. Ah, Jenny, mommy, don't. We beg you to go. That is because Jenny knows if she goes, that might be the last going. <laughs> no, that's just the beauty of Africa. That's some of the things. I was touched by men saying, you know, in Africa, we are trained to cry inside. That's why when you see African men, when incident happens or when they are touched, they just cry inside. You never see us cry outside. For an African man to cry outside, his money has been stolen. <laughs> oh, yes. It has to be very strong like that. And I'm in town this weekend uh, for a wedding. And I told Papa that, you know, after the wedding yesterday, I'll come. And, you know, when we talk about wedding, wedding, you know, the marriage institution is one of, you know, the first institution that God himself created, you know. And he says uh, a man shall leave his uh, father and his mother and, you know, cleave to his wife. He that find the wife, find a good thing and obtain a favor from God. For those of us who are married, all of us who are married, and I know most of us here are married, we know marriage is not a bed of roses. I stand before you today looking very young. Every time I tell people how long I've been married, they are always surprised. To the glory of God, I've been in this business for a while. I've been married for a good 25 uh, months. <laughs> and um, I'm still going very strong. People ask me, how do you do it? I say, it's the glory of God. It's not me. I don't even know how I do it myself. 25. Wow, that's a long time. And uh, what I've realized is that there are some questions that your spouse asks you. When they ask you those questions, they are signs to some other things. I've come to realize that whenever your, uh, your spouse or your wife ask you questions like, Honey, do you love me? She's about to ask for something very expensive. She says, honey, how much do you love me? She has spent something very expensive on the card and she wants to tell you. Those are some of the signs. But you see, growing up in Africa, I realized that marriage, the way we practice in Africa is totally different from the way it's practiced in this part of the world. I've also noticed that every Sunday while my parents are preparing for church, my father gives my mom a one-hour lead to prepare. Because women take a longer time because, you know, they have to walk. You see, between the head and the shoulder, there's a lot of work that goes on in there. You know, right here in this congregation, some women carry three nations on their hair. Only you, you are carrying Peruvian, Brazilian, Himalayan. That is three continents you are carrying on your own head. That is why sometimes when the angel is coming, he's expected to meet an African. But he's meeting three nations. Only you, United Nations. And on the face alone, we have, some people have three layers. You have the foundation, first foundation, second layer, third layer. So when Angel Gabriel comes, he doesn't recognize you anymore. Because the eyelashes is not your own. 
The lips is not the color that AJ Gabriel gave you. So when they come to the sister, we are looking for Sister Rose, but Sister Rose is not here today. Amen? Our God is good. And I remember that growing up, you know, I've come to realize that women like to ask their husband, you know, their approval, whatever they are going out. And sometimes this gets to some African, because see, African men just want to do what they want to do and just leave. And I realized that my mother does that too, until one day, because of the reply my father gave. Every time she's going out, she'll ask my father, how does my head girl look? My father will say, it is good, it is beautiful. What about my dress? It is beautiful. What about my shoes? Fabulous. My jewelry is ah, about the whole makeup. But one day she made the mistake of asking, relating to age. She now says, I just made my hair. How do I look? How old do I look? My father said, okay, you look 20. Can we go? He said, no, 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 no. What about my makeup? I tried to put extra in it. How do I look? My father said, 20. He said, what about my dress? Today I'm wearing a gown. How do I look? My father said, 20. Can we go? He said, no. You have forgotten the shoes. I just bought it. High heels. It used to be three inches. Now it's six inches. How old do I look? My father said, okay, 20. Can we go now? My mother said, hey, now we're ready to go. He said, now, add all the ages together. That is the real age you look. From that day, she stopped asking my father. Say, you this 80 year old man, can we go now? Our God is good. Marriage is not a bed of roses. We go through a lot. And another thing I've realized that, you see, for marriage to start, you see, in those days, our intent, intended, they believe in our future. Like, you see, most of the people who are married, they will have been married for, like, 20, 30 years. They will tell you that when they met their husband, it was probably nothing. It was an aspiring doctor or aspiring lawyer or aspiring businessman, but I believed in him. That was those days. Today, we want to see the future now. So when you go to a singles convention, I experience this because I handle a singles convention. Why they are dancing? Do you know the interview starts from the moment you start dancing? If you call a sister, hey, Sister Rose, would you like to dance? And she's dancing with you. She's conducted the interview. How are you? The dude says, I'm fine. What do you do for a living? You, you're better, your answer had better be good. Um, I'm in between jobs. The, the more negative the answer, the bigger the space. So what do you do for a living? Uh, you know, I just graduated. I've not found a job yet. Then she's moving backwards. <laughs> then she now say, the keys in your hand, what is that key? Oh, that is the key to my uh, Suzuki. <laughs> not the popular car. Another step back one. Okay, the Suzuki, is that the SUV? Uh, no. Is it the car? No. Is it the motorcycle? No. So what the key is that? It is the key to my generator. God punish your generator. No, hold it, no. We want the future now. Nobody wants all those kind of generator. You live in Nigeria? Amen. Our God is good. And all the time. And I've been telling people that if you come from the kind of environment where I come from, you appreciate everything you see in this part of the world. Because you see, the first thing I realized in this part of the world is that everything is developed. Everything is developed. Everything is packaged in a beautiful way. Because when I was coming from Lagos, my luggage was disorganized. But immediately got here, it became organized. See, my luggage got on the carousel and was moving in a very organized manner. And to the glory of God, um, I became an American citizen two days ago. Amen. So I'm moving there. So when they ask us to pay allegiance to the American flag and deny all other countries immediately, so you deny all, I say, I do, I deny. Because when I think of where I'm coming from, light is not stable, water is not running sometimes, I say, I deny, please. I embrace the American flag. I embrace the organized world. Because you see, praising God, even worshiping God in America is sweeter than any other place in the world. Where I come from, when they ask you to open your Bible, they mean open the Bible. Open your Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. You see us using saliva. But here, praising God is so easy. Uh, brethren, bring out your iPad and Google Matthew 7.7. 7. <laughs> if you don't have an iPad, bring out your iPhone, your Blackberry, your Android. If you don't have any of that, let them push it on the screen. <laughs> Where I come from, you don't have choices. You either have your Bible or you don't have it. So you share with your neighbor beside you. And God help you if your neighbor has the baddest breath ever. 
He says, and read the Bible. Talk to your neighbor. I said, neighbor. Say, God, Lord, bless you. The blood bless you. Oh, my goodness. There is no blessing in that. That's why I say, you know, when you are in church, you have to be in spirit because God is a spirit and God, those who worship him, worship him in spirit and in. Amen. So when the pastor tells you to turn to your neighbor in church, make sure you are in the spirit. One guy almost got slapped two weeks ago. He said, turn to your neighbor. I said, neighbor. He said, neighbor, God bless you. He said, God bless you. He said, turn to your neighbor again on your right. I said, neighbor. He said, neighbor, the Lord will enlarge you. And he turned. I said, the Lord will. The lady was already large. And I said, the Lord will enlarge you. Do you must slap him. I have been working out for the past two weeks to reduce his size. You want the Lord to enlarge me? And the pastor said, turn to that neighbor again. I said, neighbor. He said, neighbor. I said, the Lord will make you bigger. He just he said, the, the Lord will sustain you, man. <laughs> Wisdom is a principal thing. Amen. Our God is good. And all the time, it is so sweet to worship God here. I notice that in this part of the world, pastors don't have to shout. Because you see, everything is high tech. The microphone is connected to a bigger speaker. That is why I notice that when pastors start service in church in America... Their song starts with, I see the Lord. Why would you see the Lord? We are very close to him. Where we come from, the microphone might not be working. So the pastor has to shout on top of his voice. That is why, you know, sometimes when the pastors preach in America and they say, oh, let us point our hands to the pastor. Virtue has left him. I say, where? If you want to see where virtue has left pastor, come to Lagos. Because the pastor, if he has not shouted, they don't believe he has anointing. I say, pray the Lord. They say, hey, talk to him. I say, virtue has left. You say, where? We know virtue has left the pastor. That's where you see virtue has left the pastor. Where you see the Lord. We are closer to God here. That's why I've been telling people that in America, you don't have demons. You have familiar spirits. Because they know the pastor and the pastor know them. So the pastor can easily tell them, I tell you, foul spirit, get out now. And this demon will cut off. Oh, I'm going out of here. I don't like the way the pastor talked to me. Not Nigerian demons. Oh. Nigerian demons, you have to give them transport fare for them to leave. <laughs> say, I tell you, demon, go. He said, I don't have transport money. He said, take 29 and go. Thank you very much. God bless you. I'll see you some other time.